Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome once again to Sermons in the Park. As you can see, I'm at home today with my backdrop behind me. I'm Reverend Jamie McCaskill. As most of you know, we're nearing the end of the year. It's almost time to say goodbye to 2019 and say hello to 2020. Remember that uh, God's blessings are always awaiting you. Uh, leave, leave all your troubles behind you. God doesn't settle. He wants his people to be ever moving forward in their work for the kingdom. How else can we see the plans that Heavenly Father has for us if we're not moving forward? Um, today I want to, uh, there's a sermon that, during my sermons, if you watch them, you've heard me quite often mention uh, the Good Samaritan. So today's sermon will be uh, on that story. So if you want to go ahead and get ready, you can take out your Bibles, which is all going to be in one chapter. Go ahead and turn your Bible to chapter Luke, chapter 10. We're going to be reading verses 25 to 37 here in a little bit. Um, one thing about the Good Samaritan that I want to point out before we get started, uh, when you read the parables that uh, Jesus Christ tells, he always mentions that it is a parable. Have you ever noticed that? It's almost always, uh, he always mentions it, that it is a parable. When he tells the story of the Good Samaritan, not only does he not say that it is a parable, when, you, when we get to reading it here in a little bit, I want you to notice that how many of you, when you're telling, you're talking about someone, but you don't want to, uh, cause drama go a certain person um, we all do it right we all will go a certain person did this a certain person did that I want you to notice Jesus' language when we get into this uh, particular uh, story um, and I want you all to bear in mind also that um, the Samaritans and the Jews were they, they, they despised each other. Uh, if you read into the history of uh, the Samaritans and the Jews' relationship, you will notice they burned each other's temples down. They absolutely despised one another. Uh, they really could not stand each other. And I want you to know that, think about that when we get to another part of this story. I want you to notice, pay, pay close attention to the language used between Jesus and this this uh, student of the law, while we when we get into this story, we should pay really close attention to that because that is really important for this for my what I'm wanting to uh, point out with this uh, particular story. So, um, uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want you guys to understand a little bit better why I why I always use the uh, the Good Samaritan. Uh, in my sermon, because I'm pretty sure you've noticed I use it a lot. Um, so we're going to start with uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 25. We're going to start there. And it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood to test Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied to him, saying, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? The, the student, the lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, You have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself when he said, Who is my neighbor? That is a selfish attitude, isn't it? Look at verse 29 again. After Jesus had answered it, and Jesus had told him, love your neighbor, and, and said, love your neighbor, he asks, who is that? Who is my neighbor? Brothers and sisters, time and again, I, uh, I told you, each and every one of you is the neighbor of the other. I'm your neighbor. No matter where you are in this world, 
I'm your neighbor. We're here in God's house together. I'm your neighbor. That man down the street that you don't even say hello to. Him. That's your neighbor. That boss at work that you can't stand, who constantly jokes, you know, makes rude remarks to you. That's your neighbor. You're supposed to love him. We're all each other's neighbor. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're in Washington, Saudi Arabia, England, New Orleans, wherever. On this blue marble. We're all neighbors. And I want you to bear that in mind because I love you. and I, Each and every one of you, I love you. And I hope that you're all doing well. Let's go back to verse 30. It's where we left off. Jesus says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, and leaving him for dead. By chance, a certain priest came down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the same place, came and looked, Passed by on the other side. A priest. A leader of the temple. A Levite. A Levite is essentially what in church you would call a deacon. They see him laying there. They see this man bleeding. He's dying. Do they stop? They saw him. The Bible clearly states they seen him and they passed by on the other side. They don't stop. Oh, I know what you're thinking. They're priests. They're deacons. They might have been busy. They might have been going down to uh, some fundraiser, you know, doing their job. Brothers and sisters, as a man of God, it's our job to stop. It's my job if I was to be passing by you right now. It's my job literally to say hello. You know, on Christmas Eve, I'm planning to go to the hospital to see if there's anyone in there that's admitted who might need prayer. It's my job as a man of God to make myself accessible to people who need me. Same for that Levite, that deacon. It's his job. He's been called to do it. They were being selfish. Not only did they not help him, I want you to pay attention. They passed by on the other side. To me, that sounds like they made sure he didn't see them. If they passed on the other side, they literally walked away. They walked around him, but on the other side, like I said, to me, it just sounds like all oh, they made sure he didn't see them. So we'll go back, we'll go back in there. Verse 33. A certain Samaritan, but bear in mind, as I said earlier, Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. A certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. When he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. He set him on his horse, on his animal. Brought him to an inn and took care of. On the next day, when he had to depart, he took out two dinar, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Think about that. He went out of his way to stop. He was a journey. We don't know where he was going, why he was going. I'm pretty sure he was on his own, on, on, on business. They didn't travel just for anything. He saw a Jew laying there, the enemy of his people. He stopped. What a great person he was. He took it on himself to help him. He did six things here that I want you to pay attention to. 
These are six things that I think as a Christian, each and every one of us could learn from. We can all learn something from this, from this story. He did six things. Number one, he stopped. Even Like I said, even though he was busy, he knew that this was slow as travel. He saw this man hurting, and then he did number two. He approached him. He made sure that he knew who this was. He made sure that the man could see him. Not like the priest, not like the Levite, not like your preacher and your deacon, they didn't, you know, who, did, who made sure he didn't see him. He made sure he saw him. He approached him. He made, he made sure that the, he could see him face to face so he could do number three. You know what number three was? He got down where he was. He got down to where he was, made sure to see what he needed so he could see how to help him. How else could he do number four, right? Number four, he picked him up. He didn't leave him there. No. He didn't say, hey, brother, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get help. No, 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 no. He didn't. He picked him up so he could do number five. He took him. He took him away. Like I said, he didn't make he didn't see what he needed help so he could go find someone. No. He took action. And by taking action, he did number six. He provided for him. When I worked at AutoZone, if you did something a little extra, uh, they would give you an extra mile with me. It was a little pen to put on your collar and they would give you a little bit of a bonus. And um I believe, you know, you, you had to go beyond the call of duty to help the customer. And the Samaritan here, in my in my opinion, he received that extra mile of 10 brothers and sisters. He took the extra mile. He took this man to that end. And like it said in the story, he told the man, I'm going to leave you this two dinar to cover anything else he needs. And he took him there, and he made sure that he was taken care of. Whatever, anything else he needs, I will pay for it when I get back. And Matthew, uh, you don't have to turn there. Matthew five chapter, Matthew Matthew chapter five verse forty one. Jesus tells us, "Whoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him to go with him twenty, which means two. That good Samaritan right here." He went that extra mile. He went that second mile with him. I want you to remember this too. The Samaritan was traveling. You know, he didn't, back then, you didn't carry a lot of money, especially on that road. That road is called the road of blood. If you look it up, it's called the road of blood. If you're going to get robbed on that street, you're going to get killed. Samaritan went on that road. So, you know, he didn't carry a lot of money, right? No, he wasn't. Because he knew the robbers and the thieves were there. So he only took what he needed. So what did he do when he paid for this? When he paid all that money, he put himself in a hardship. He didn't have the actual, all this money he had set aside that he used. He doesn't have it now. What if he gets to where he's going and he needs it? Well, he put himself in a hardship because he paid for this young man, this Jew, this enemy of his people. Even though he's this this guy is technically this his people are his people's enemy, he paid for it. Put himself in a hardship. So let's go back to Luke again. Luke chapter ten, verse thirty six. Which of, Jesus asked, which of these three do you think became a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of these robbers? Now, this is where I want you to pay attention right, right here. Because this is this, the expert of religious law. How does he answer? He says, the one who showed mercy to him. Jesus said, go and do the same. Go and do the same. As I said, the Jews and the Samaritans did not like each other. Right here, do you notice? How does the expert of religious law answer? Does he say the Samaritan? No. 
just to show you how good the Samaritan really was. If you look it up, just read on your own. The Jews would not say a Samaritan. This man said answers from the one who showed him mercy. The Jews and the Samaritans disliked each other so much, the Jews would not even say the Samaritan. So, as you can see, he showed action, mercy. The Samaritan showed action, he showed mercy, he showed love. This is Jesus' challenge to you and me, to all of us. He wants us to be like the Samaritan. If you look back at the verse 27, love your neighbor. Verse 37, the one who showed mercy. Jesus answers, go and do the same. Hallelujah. Go and do the same. So when you go forward today, go forward today with love and love everyone. Help each other. This is the Christmas season. Each one of us, is, we're, we're, we're in the Christmas season right now. And, and for some of us, it's the toughest time. So when you're out there in Walmart or wherever, <coughs> excuse me, and you're doing your shop, your last minute Christmas shopping, remember that when you're traveling through there. Jesus wants me to show mercy. Jesus wants me to show love. When somebody's being rude to you or or however, do you think that they're being more rude to you than a Samaritan or a Jew to a Samaritan would go burn their temples down? Show love and mercy. Show compassion. Help each other. It's the meaning of the season. I've seen a thing on Facebook recently where someone, if you want to keep Christ in Christmas, help each other. Help it. Because that's what Jesus would do. That's what he would do. He would love and, and care for each and every one of us. That's why he went there. Because he loved us. He cares for us. And if you're someone out there today who doesn't know Jesus, who hasn't accepted the gift that's already been given, I challenge you today to do it. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to forgive you. And the Father in heaven wants to welcome you in the dark, wide open. He's ready to say, son or daughter, home is here. I'm not here. I'm not here. So, I know, like I said, I know several of you out there are having a hard time at Christmas, and I pray that uh, you find the peace and love in this season that you need to, and I pray that everything's going good for you, uh, because this is a tough time of year for everyone. I, myself, am having a tough time when water is out in the trailer, so uh, they, they got to come out for the new water meter in so, I love each and every one of you. I pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you all throughout this holiday season. And I pray, if anything, you want to give a gift, help someone. Help someone who's having a good time. And, uh, so, bless you all. You all have a very, very Merry Christmas. I love each and every one of you.